This year we worked on a theme, or last year we worked on a theme for this year. Every year we have a theme of some type, and I try to preach all the sermons that year with the word of the theme in it, somehow getting it all together. And how ironic, how ironic it is that this year the theme is go when the government tells us to stay. So it makes it a little bit difficult when you think about it. But at the same time, there is a way to go while stuck. And so today we're going to talk about that because most of us are stuck. We should be stuck according to what we're told by the government and the CDC and everyone else. We should be stuck in our homes, quarantined in our homes for, to some degree, some more than others. But today we're going, to st we're going to talk about that. You know, it does not take anyone very smart to realize that sometimes we can't control our circumstances. Now, I like to pretend that I can. I like to pretend that I can just walk into the store and buy toilet paper anytime I want. But I can't. It does not matter what kind of car I drove to the grocery store in. It doesn't matter how many hundred dollar bills I might have in my billfold or not. I can't get it. Sometimes. I am not in control nearly the way that I think that I'm in control. I think that sometimes that my citizenship, my nationality ought to just make people bow down for me. They don't. I think sometimes that because of my, uh, that I'm a minister, that surely because of my profession that that will do it. That doesn't. Nothing that I think that should give me control really gives me any control at all over some situations. When I was a little boy, there was nothing more important to me than playing baseball. I ate baseball, I drank baseball, I lived baseball, that was it. I watched every game I could watch, and I was playing outside when games weren't on. And I can remember being in Little League, and it raining, and crying, and making my parents take me up to the field, and we would sit there, and as they would say, the game is not, it's canceled, and I would say, just take me there, because just in case... And I can remember the whole field being underwater. And I would sit and cry and cry as I looked out over the field. I couldn't control that. I couldn't stop it. Although I wanted to, I couldn't. And today we have learned that beyond anything, that we can't control our circumstances always. So we have to decide this. We can either lose it or we can find purpose. And there may be some time in this time of staying in that you will lose it. You'll cry or you'll be frustrated or upset or whatever. That We understand sometimes that happens. But overall, I've got to decide that I'm going to make something good out of a really bad situation. Because there's nothing I can do to stop a virus personally. Well, I can stay away from people, but I can't stop it. I can't do the cure. I'm not, the one, I'm not a doctor or scientist that would ever know how to do that. So I have to, instead of losing it, find a purpose in this really rough situation that I had not scheduled and had not planned for and find a way through it. And I want you to think about this by going to the Bible. Now, when I started thinking about people who were stuck, I thought about the Apostle Paul. Paul was not quarantined. Paul didn't have a virus as far as we know. He didn't have coronavirus. But Paul was in prison, and he couldn't leave. He couldn't go anywhere. But somehow he could find good in the place where he was. So in the letter to the Philippians, in chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, he said, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what, was, what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Do you hear that? What has happened to me, me being quarantined, so to speak, me being in prison, has served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Wow. I think that if I were thrown in jail, especially if I were thrown in jail because I was preaching about Jesus, I might even be really upset with the Lord and say, Lord, why did you do this? I was trying to be a good guy. Why would you do that? Why would you allow that? And so here we are. You might be saying, you know, all I'm trying to do is raise my kids and I'm just trying to live my life and I go to church on Sundays and I even watch it when it comes on like right now. Why would all this happen? 
Paul says, I can find purpose in that. I can find good. So what good could come from this? Surely there's some kind of good. Well, let's think of some simple things here in the beginning, and then we'll kind of progress as the sermon goes on. But get some things done at home. Some of you are doing that right now. You are getting a lot of things done. You're cleaning out closets uh, and, and taking care of things that you haven't taken care of in a long time. We vacuumed out our cars yesterday, something I don't like to do, but we did because, well, we're at home, right? Barbara and Emma are even painting some of the rooms in our house. As you notice, they are painting the rooms in the house, but I have to study because I'm still preaching, right? At least that's what I'm telling them. So there are all kinds of things you can get done right now. It's a time for, let me hear this, positive family time. There may be some times that you have too much family and everybody needs to go to their rooms. We get that too. But it is a time to sit down and maybe do a puzzle together or tell, tell stories, family stories, go through pictures together. There are all kinds of things you can do that are positive. Watch a movie together. And you can even help neighbors and family, as long as you stay six feet away, you can help your neighbors somewhat, right? There are things you can do for each other that are good. But I want you to understand this as we talk about some of these things I hope you know that this is about more than reading novels and doing jigsaw puzzles, but this is also an opportunity for us to get closer to God than maybe we've ever been before, and this may be the turning point in the lives of many of us to say, do you know what? I can tell you when I turned it on for the Lord whenever I got to know the Lord in a way I never had before, and that was whenever we were quarantined back in our houses in 2020. Some of us will say, that was the time because I had read everything else on the shelf and decided to read the Bible or whatever it is. This can be something really good. I want you to see again what Paul said in chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. This is how he helped his neighbors and his friends. I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it, on, carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Do you hear what he's doing? He is thinking, thanking God for all those other Christians. And I wonder if he named them by name. He probably did. But whether you're naming people by name or just thinking in general, that there are people out there who are our brothers and sisters that we can thank God for, that help us have strength because we realize what they're doing, and now they give us strength because we know that they're praying for us. I want you to see what else Paul did in verses 10 through 14. He said, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now that I've already obtained all of this, or not that I have, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Do you see what Paul does? This is a man who is in confinement, who is saying that he is still pressing toward the goal. Do you see that he's not saying, oh no, all is lost because now I'm in prison. And when I get out of prison, there's a lot I can do. No, he says, you know what? There are things I can do right now. And one of those things he did was he spent time getting to know Jesus better. He said, I want to know Christ and the power of the resurrection and to participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death and being raised like him. We can spend time getting to know Jesus better than we do right now. And then there's another thing he does here, or, or, or that he does, he doesn't quit. Just don't quit. We can't put our faith on hold during this time. Some of us might think, well, you know, everything's on hold. You know, my job's on hold, and, and, and going out to eat's on hold, and, and going to stores on hold. But we can't put our faith on hold because we are still children of God. We are still 
we are still his and we are still expected to live for him and we're still blessed to get to live for him. So we don't put that on hold. We keep pressing toward the goal. And you say, well, how can I do that when I'm all by myself or maybe I'm just with my family it, one way or the other? How could I do that? Well, some of that is through what I call honest prayer. And when I say honest prayer, I mean be serious with your feelings with God. Don't try to hide from him. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to pray about that because I don't want God to know. He already knows. Go ahead and tell him how you're feeling. Say, so, Lord... I don't like this. I don't like it, Lord. I don't understand it. It, it. It's just hard to believe. I don't know who to believe. But I do know I trust in you and my faith is in you, whatever happens. Be honest with God. Maybe just start praying and thanking God for your blessings. The other night, I couldn't sleep. And you know what I did? I tried to think of a blessing that started with each letter of the alphabet. Just something to thank God for, whatever you need to do. Have Bible study time. There is so much you can find on the internet now, and you have, if you are a member at Memorial, you've probably gotten some suggestions already from various places of things you can watch or things you can do to study. But just pick up the Bible and start reading the Bible. Read in places that might help you right now, like the Psalms or the Proverbs or some of the New Testament, whatever it might be. Read it all. It's all good. It's all important. But I want you to understand this. When Paul was in prison, he didn't have the New Testament with him because it was still being written. He had the Old Testament. Read the Old Testament. And then also understand that he meditated on what he knew about Jesus. Sometimes what we do is not reading or studying. It's just meditating what does it mean to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and with all of our strength? What does it mean to love our neighbor? And when you put that in context of the Bible, then what you're doing is meditating on God or you're thinking about your blessings. You are meditating on the blessings of God. Have conversation with other people. You remember... Remember when computers first came out and the big joke was that you could catch a virus from your computer, a computer virus? And then obviously we realized you can't, right? We still have our phones. We still have email. We still have texting. We still have, many of you have FaceTime. You still have ways to communicate. The post office is still open. There are still ways we can have conversation and build other people up. There's still ways to do that, and we need to be in communication with other people. And application. Apply what you are studying. Apply what you're meditating on. Use it for positive. Don't just gain knowledge, but use it to share with others. I like the trust in the faith that Paul had in Philippians 3, in verse, starting in verse 20, going through the first verse of chapter 4. He says, But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and I long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. A man in isolation a man in confinement is encouraging other people to stand for the Lord. Why, do you know how that must have made them feel on the outside? If Paul could encourage them in confinement, then I can stand for the Lord too. Encourage each other to stand strong and to do what is right. Encourage others to be strong. Send emails and texts and letters Make, do FaceTime if you have that. Find a way to communicate with others. Make calls and let people know that you care. I have been so blessed by so many people who have checked in on me. Well, I want to check in on other people too, and I've done some of that. But we need to be checking on each other, not just in the church, but our family and our friends and people around the world. This may be a time to renew some old friendships that we've had with people maybe we haven't thought about in years to just say, I was thinking about you and praying about you. 
Well, the big thing, I guess, for all of us to decide is, how will I spend my time? Because this probably is not going to be over by Tuesday. This is going to be going on for a while. And we've got to decide, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to be better because of this? Or am I going to go downhill because of this? I'm the one who can decide that through God's help. There's a little thing that's going around. It's even been on the Memorial Church website. I don't, it's not on your screen today. But it's a little chart that says things I can't control and things I can control. I can't control the actions of others. I can't control what other people will, will predict about what will happen. I can't control the amount of toilet paper at the store. I can't control how long this will last. I can't control how other people will react. But this is what I can control. I can control my positive attitude. I can decide that. I can turn off the news. It's not bad to be informed. We all need to be informed. But if your TV is staying on CNN or Fox or MSNBC or even maybe the local channels, you are going to be a nervous wreck because all you're doing is hearing what's going on everywhere. That's not good. Turn it off. Watch the Andy Griffith show or something. Go outside. Be with your family. I can control the amount of social media that I've let come into my mind. I can control my own social distancing. I may not be able to control you, but I can control myself. And I can control how I will follow the recommendations that are given to us right now. I can control that. Here's the incredible thing for Christians. We have help when we go through times like this. We have the help of God. We lean on God. And you being strong and you being positive is going to help other people be strong and be positive. This may be a time when people start saying, I can't do this by myself. I need God. And we need to be there to say God is the one who is getting us through it. Now let me tell you more about the salvation that Jesus offers. Like we always do, we want to pray for you. If you want, if you want to pray and need prayers, you can text me or text one of the elders. You can put it on our Facebook page. And if you need to be baptized into Christ and have your sins forgiven, become a part of his kingdom, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us know. We'll help you. We'll get there. We may wear gloves and a mask, but we'll baptize you because we want to be right with God. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear God, our faith is in you. We trust you, Father. You are our God. We aren't going anywhere. We're st staying with you. Father, help us to be strong and help us to be examples. Father, help us to be humble and realize that, Father, we can use this as a reset time spiritually to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen.